Of course I don't own Pac-Man, but uh, I'm, making, I'm making a VR game about Pac-Man and it's kind of scary. Yeah, that's amazing. You may have noticed, I like putting myself in movies. And this is less of a tutorial and more of a guide and a show about the kinds of things you need to do to be able to do that, to be able to put yourself into a movie. Now for the Scott Pilgrim intro I did for the other channel, originally there's Michael Cera, and he walks in and there's all sorts of problems going on. I need to get rid of Michael Cera, I need to get rid of text, and I need to get rid of a part where Michael Cera's shirt even goes over uh, Ramona, who I need to keep in the frame. Getting rid of the things you don't want in there anymore, that's called a paint out. After painting out what you don't want, you have a clean plate of what you do want. As long as you see from the same angle every bit of the background or character that needs to be painted out, you can usually do some sort of stitch work to get a good clean plate. Grab your green screen footage. You'll need to make sure that you match the lighting style of the movie you're trying to copy. Could mean not having a backlight, which would make it harder to green screen. So make sure you give yourself plenty of space from the green screen to limit the amount of spill that will come on you and to limit the need of a backlight. You've got a clean plate and a green screen shot of you talking to the actor or actress you're interacting with. One thing that's going to immediately become apparent is your audio uh, is still broken. Now, if there's no music or any background noise in the audio, it's very simple. Just cut out the character you're replacing and put your audio in its place. But it wasn't that simple for the Scott Pilgrim paint out because Ramona is talking over a crowd of people, and so is Scott, and they don't really talk over each other, which is good, but they do talk over a crowd of people and a little bit of music. Hey, you know Pac-Man? I know of him. Well, Pac-Man was originally called... Hey, so do you know Pac-Man? I know of him. You know, I, I might... So I have a tutorial already about removing background noise and I had to do a lot of that style of doctoring and then put a compressor on my own voice to make sure that uh, my dynamics matched her dynamics of speaking too. Now with the audio possibly being the trickiest part surprisingly, moving on, the rest of it's just a green screen. So this is actually a bad take that I've had to flip around because it's the wrong one. The original take, the one I used, I can't find it for the tutorial so fun stuff I can show you using this bad take what the steps look like so let's get started so first off you can use a Bezier mask to just cut out the parts of the green screen you're not using right so you got a clip in there you can cut that off well, like I said this is a bad take so I'm it's a little tighter of a cut than the one I end with so if you see my arm leave the screen that's something just to keep in mind to avoid yourself. I had to go back and refilm it for several reasons and that was one of them. Once you've got the green screen and yourself isolated, the next thing you'll need to do is do a chroma key. Now I've gone ahead and chroma keyed this for the speed of the tutorial, but there is a lot of steps and tricks and tips about chroma keying that I have a whole tutorial about that I would love for you to watch and tricks in case your chroma key is extra hard to grab for whatever reason too. Next, what we're gonna do is the picture in picture effect. Now, picture and picture effect is magic. You can just take it and grab it and then boom, you can be any size and direction you want. Now in the recut, in the retake I did, I, I positioned my the camera a little better where I could be at the more appropriate eye line. Uh, but for this tutorial, just pretend that I did that. I don't know how tall she is in real life, but I know that she can't be super tall. And I know that uh, I wear a medium sized shirt, so I can't be too much bigger than she is. Now the next thing you'll need to do, and this is super super important, is you'll need to do some color grading. So if you hit Alt and G and you get to your color grading tab, you need to go back into it. It's going to put it at the front, and most of the time you want it at the front, but for this kind of effect you don't. You want it here. You want it at the end, because you don't want to affect your chroma key. You want to make sure it's after all of your chroma key effects that you're doing this. Then go to your input output first. We want to make sure that our darks and shadows match the darks and shadows of the original clip and you also want to make sure that your brightnesses match the original brightnesses now uh, this clip actually isn't that bright uh, there's not a lot of shininess uh, but it actually is very dark looking uh, it's got that like midnight party look there's something still off about this and 
what we can do is actually lower the output max and make myself not shine as much too, make myself blend into the scene just a little bit better. The colors are actually a bit more green, so if I go to the offset, that kind of grabs everything all together because this is a re relatively white balance clip from the beginning. So if you hit control, you can move slower. I'm going to move it just a touch to blue and green and make sure that I don't mess up the red of the solo cup which is still matching but mine's still kind of too bright and it's because my saturation is too bright and an easy way to fix that is just go to your effects and go for black and white and you don't want it all the way black and white obviously but just like you know a hair of black and white will actually rain down your colors a little bit and make them a little bit more muted until the reds are a bit more really kind of tones down all the colors to match a bit a bit better what this would look like why did I delete the right take and I have to use the wrong take for the tutorial because I thought I need to keep all this stuff for when I make a tutorial about this and then later I thought I need to clean off my one terabyte drive and I cleaned off my one terabyte drive and then I thought I kept everything for the tutorial and I did not I did not keep everything for the tutorial but I'm thankful that I do have this shot this one I actually made myself a bit darker than I did here so let's go ahead and kind of do some matching now this is where I'm going to use color curves because uh, it's really not a linear problem here. I need to kind of change my brightness, overall brightness, down. And kind of change my curves to where the some of the lower shadow brightnesses come up, but maybe some of the higher brightnesses go down. Now, there's still several more things. If you look at the final version, there's several more things I did. Oh, man, that takes so much better. We have the muted reds. We already have the uh, color-corrected colors and the brightnesses, and uh, I'm a touch more green than I was originally. But uh, one of the biggest problems now... One, this is really sharp take out of my 4K camera. This is a compressed internet footage of compressed footage of compressed footage. So since it's not the source footage, what I'm gonna have to do is go to uh, video effects and Gaussian blur. And I'm going to grab this one, put it on here, and make it just like a hair, like just 0 .0001, 0 .0001, another zero. Oh wait, no, it's because I don't have one in the decimal place there. So um, that hair of a blur kind of helps account for maybe a, a bit more. Let's try 0 0.05. You can barely see it, and you might not even be able to see it in the compression, but um, this, this touch of a blur, I'm going to move it up a decimal place here. There we go. It helps sell the fact that I don't have as many hard edges like I was part of this original... Uh, original shot here which is definitely something that I did in the final because I'm much blurrier here than I am here now there's still one more thing to to change about this <laughs> two actually so one I don't have a shadow and two I don't have film grain so let's deal with the shadow first so I have a tutorial about this using this clip actually for layer dimensionality but if you uh, the layer dimensionality effect doesn't work for you I have a whole nother tutorial you can create a shadow by using the mask of your green screen shot and you can turn it into a black uh, mask and then fade the opacity and boom now you have a shadow. I have a tutorial about that as well. We're going to just go with a uh, drop shadow with down light and uh, I'm going to change the light location And that pretty well does it. Pretty pretty simple. Um, I don't want any embossing or anything, uh, but what I will do is lower the opacity of the shadow because right now it's really dark and I'll just kind of drop it a little bit so you can see through to the clean plate. So now it's almost there. One last thing. We need film grain. Scott Pilgrim was shot mostly on, uh, shot on digital and film, all sorts of stuff. They did a lot of tricks there. Uh, but if we put a subtle film grain on this, uh, even more subtle actually, lower the amount some more and the granularity some more uh, that actually kind of helps add some um, grain gives me that same chemical effect look uh, that all of it should have it also kind of ties it in makes it look a little less imperfect and more like it was shot and compressed and things like that so 
that now I'm pretty well in the shot. Uh, Michael Sarah is out. I am in, and that is that. So this is the final. Again, uh, this is the goal of what I think it should look like. But these are the steps illustrated and redone uh, in a very loosey goosey way. So. I hope you enjoyed this guide. I hope you are able to make some sort of good movie paint out for your personal projects. Thanks for watching. Like this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one. If you're interested in buying Vegas Pro, check out my buyer's guide and affiliate links because that would help out this channel a ton. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.